New Zealand seriously dark fairy tale. Puppetry and shadow play show The Road That Wasn't There has been wowing people across the world and winning numerous awards. And joining us this morning from the show, please welcome to the cafe, Ralph McCubbin, Hal Alberton and Paul Waggett. Morning, guys. Yeah. Morning. First of all, congratulations on the show. So many awards and accolades. This is a fantastic thing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the show itself, Ralph? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's, uh, it's all about the idea of paper roads, which are roads that exist on maps but not really in the real world. Um, so there are heaps, there's, there's 56,000 I think in New Zealand, 56,000 56, kilometres of them. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, it's nuts, eh? So we, we heard about these um, and they were put down on maps to fast track development back in the colonial days. Um, so they don't actually exist at all? Uh, mm. Sometimes they sort of do, like they'll send tourists on wayward trips when they're following their GPS. Or, um, Get lost in the middle of the field. Yeah, kind or of thing. drive into a lake or, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, in the play, it's about a, a girl who follows a paper road on a map and finds herself in a paper town. Ooh. Okay, so Al, what's your involvement with this? Well, I play the girl. Yes. Um, and I play an older version of her and a younger version of her. And the younger version is depicted in a puppet. Um, and the older version is me in my body. So it's a bit of both. Actually, before, before we go any further, I need to see something. I need, we've got a clip so we can show people exactly what we're yeah, talking we're about. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. Okay. My lords and ladies of the Mania Toto. A cautionary tale for your headification. Upon our very isle, not two days walk from here, there lived a dreaded beast known as the Kamawai. Part man, part dog. A reptile fearsome beyond your worst nightmares. He was a bloodthirsty cannibal, and it was his habit to hide in the shadows at the top of the Kaurau stream and eat the travellers who set out across the water. The entrance to his cave was littered with bones that he had picked clean. Oh, so many creative <laughs> elements here. That looks so incredible. Many, so many, yeah. And Paul, you know, sort of what elements are we talking about? So I guess there's shadow puppets. Shadow puppets, the, the sort of the rod puppets that you've talked about already. Uh, what's, what's a rod puppet? So sort of more like a marionette kind of, isn't okay. it? Yeah, sort of yeah. yeah. Bunraki okay. style. Yeah. yeah. Um, live music. Um, Live action, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's just drama. Oh, so Lots much drama! Lots of drama. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I think of these, these sort of puppets, the shadow puppets, I always think of Asia because they're quite big in Asian culture, mm, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, but you don't really see them in New Zealand so much. Yeah, so I mean, we were, we really wanted to have a whole mix of styles in the show, and it was also, you know, when we first made it, we made it on such a shoestring budget. Uh, we were living in the UK and we were like, if we want to have this, we'll have a play, we'll just have one actor and a chair, that's all we can afford. <laughs> and then I wrote this play that stupidly had about 50 characters. Nice work. <laughs> many different worlds. So we're like, the only way we can afford to do this is with puppets. Right, and there must be, I guess, a lot of work that goes into creating those puppets. And I know you guys have done this show before, so what's different about this particular version? All new puppets. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, are... cool. Still under construction, exciting. Yeah, now just yeah. be uh, still under construction. Wow. How long would it take to make one of those? Do you know? Um, How long did it take Hannah? Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, uh, I guess yeah. she's been working on these ones for maybe the last month or so. Right. Um, and she's working on them as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she's not here today. Exactly. Yeah, today. Uh, why do you think it's been so well received around the world? This show. Well, I think that it really um, hits home for a lot of people. So there's like several um, elements to it. So it's um, sort of attainable for children as well as for adults. So you can see it on two different oh, good. levels. We like do you know that way? Yes, I do. So um, it's quite enjoyable for older kids because it's a bit spooky. But then it also um, talks about things like potentially dementia and you know going home to see your mum and who's got old and she's telling all these crazy stories and so it can hit home for adults as well as hitting home for kids yeah you know when it comes to puppetry you know when we have guests in here that are opera singers they go to opera school you know if you go to a broadcasting school to become a presenter or whatever but is there a puppetry school in New Zealand or is this something you guys have created yourselves this entire industry? We've sort of made our own puppetry yeah. school <laughs> and then put ourselves through it. Right. Um, so I think we've done maybe a uh, hundred odd uh, performances of this show now. Wow. Yeah. Um, and we're still learning as we go along so we discover new things that right. the puppets can do. 
Do you watch YouTube videos or anything of, of great puppeteers to get ideas from them? Or yes. Is it, yeah. You yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, we'll, you know, and go to lots of shows as well. So uh, we're taking this show to the Edinburgh Fringe, and one of the things that's really exciting about that is we can see a whole bunch of work from around the world. Oh, OK, and uh, here's something else I wanted to know. What's the advantage of working with puppets that you don't have when you're working with real-life actors, I guess? You don't have to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> they can sleep in a suitcase. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's like... It's like with animation, you can you can do things with the puppets that would be that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to do live action, or, or that might even be impossible for humans to do. Um, certainly, yeah, there are, there are exciting things that happen to some of the puppets that we couldn't do to and humans. And you don't yeah. probably have to do, deal with Osh or anything like exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, would make, yeah. that would be a grand difference, wasn't it? <laughs> so this is touring New Zealand. Um, when Where's the show going to take you? Uh, so first we do uh, a week in Auckland. So we're here from the 11th till the 15th of July. And then we head down through Upper Hutt. I believe it's on the 19th. And then we're doing just one night in Wellington on the 23rd. Awesome. And then we're going from there over to Edinburgh. Sounds fantastic. Well, yeah. Best yeah. of luck, awesome guys. guys. Thank Thank you. You. Yeah, thanks. Really looking forward to hearing more about Edinburgh, actually. Now, if you would like to take a wild artistic ride to the twitchy edges of children's literature with the road that wasn't there, you like that? Uh, these school holidays, it'll be playing at the Herald Theatre, as we said, from July 11th. For details, you can go to aucklandlive.co.nz. And their theatre company, Trick of the Light, will also be doing a free performance and a workshop this weekend as part of the free Pick and Mix series. <laughs>